So Warhammer 40k 10th edition has chosen a very iconic model to have as its centerpiece. One of the most exciting reveals of the 10th edition preview was the new Terminator squad, an awesome new take on a classic design with some assault cannon goodness thrown in. Let's talk about everything that we know about the new squad and models so far, with a deep dive into the new models. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where over the past day or so we've been talking Warhammer 40k 10th edition. It's a pretty exciting time to be in the hobby, a whole load of new models and new rules unveiled, and I feel like it certainly doesn't hurt that the showcase model for the edition is one that's gone down very nicely, a bigger and scarier Terminator, brought into line with new primary scale, but very much keeping the look and feel of the Firstborn. Today I thought we'd put together everything that we know about this new Terminator squad, a remake of a classic model with the new Indomitus pattern marines. So far Games Workshop have given us two new previews of models, plus a few more shots of them, and then really quite a lot of other hints in their animated teasers and supporting materials. Due to being the first models that they're showing off as well, they're almost certainly going to be in the 10th edition big launch box, the version of the Indomitus but for 10th, so hopefully as they go they shouldn't be the hardest models to get your hands on. I feel like the best way to look at the new Terminators is to compare them side by side to the old ones. I feel like perhaps the first thing that strikes you comparing the two is just how much bigger they are compared with the standard Terminator right now. Even with that rather hunched looking appearance that they have, they do stand significantly higher than even primary Space Marines, and all of their features are just significantly beefed up, particularly if you compare the legs of these ones to the old ones, they're much bigger, as is the torso and limbs and weapons. It looks like despite the beefing up, they still will be remaining on 40mm bases. It's the same size as the old ones that Games Workshop compared them to in a side-by-side -side comparison. I guess that's quite useful for not having to rebase any Terminators if you did want to keep on using the old ones. Though I must admit the scale increase might be a bit annoying if you've got a whole ton of Terminators in your collection and you wanted to add these. It might be just a little bit jarring putting them side-by-side. -side. Maybe feels just a little bit off of Games Workshop to be selling those Deathwing Terminators quite so recently in the Azrael box, if they're suddenly going to make them look a bit on the short side. Otherwise, above all, I feel like it's more the similarities compared with the differences that really stand out between the models. As with quite a lot of retro type sculpts, Games Workshop really seem to have tried to keep as many elements roughly the same as before, but maybe just work on things like the posing and scaling of the models, as opposed to going for a complete redesign. They've got the same iconic helmet as they ever had, the Crux Terminatus is resplendent on their left shoulder, and I'd say perhaps the biggest change for the model is perhaps the posing of the thing, the head doesn't jut out quite as far as the other Terminator I think, and I feel like the legs and arms are just a little bit less awkward, more akin with what you'd actually expect to find a human inside, as opposed to jutting out at some slightly odd angles. In general, the reaction on the internet has been very, very positive to these. I haven't seen very many people saying that they don't like them. It is kind of funny that Games Workshop can get so much right by basically just giving us almost exactly the same Terminators but bigger and slightly improved posing and a few more sweet details. In general, the style of the models is pretty similar to the old ones. Nice, clean, unadorned plates that could be quite nice for things like transfers, I guess. A few odd purity seals, but these guys seem to be basically the standard mark of Terminators. Maybe at some stage we'll get some more blingy ones, say for the Deathwing, if Games Workshop does come out with those. Perhaps the other major change is to the Storm Bolter. It looks like on the new one that they've got pre-drilled gun barrels, as opposed to where you just paint them on on the old one. It's kind of hard to 100% tell from this angle, but it looks like it to me. The other place that we've seen the Terminators shown off was Games Workshop's animated trailer. This thing's certainly been making the rounds on the internet over the past 24 hours. Really quite a fun piece of animation, and resplendent in the middle of it are a deep striking unit of Terminators coming in with teleporter assaults and blazing away at the mass Tyranids with their storm bolters and that brutal assault cannon. I feel like Games Workshop have probably sold quite a lot of people on being able to fire that assault cannon in game with the awesome slow mos that they're doing here. We also get a good look at what appears to be another couple of Terminator characters as well, which we'll return to later in the video, but it looks like the Terminators aren't going to be completely alone in this and perhaps like other marks of armour, they will be backed up by some character releases. Talking of assault cannons though, this guy is the other Terminator that was shown off. I must admit, I feel like they have done the assault cannon well on this one. Again, perhaps the most changed element of the model is the gun. It looks a bit more serious and a bit more new tech, as opposed to a slightly old-looking Gatling gun. I'm sure it's just itching to get that thing blazing away at the massed hordes of Xenos. We've got a few other shots of the Terminators as well. Here's what our normal guy looks like from the back and the sides. 
The power grills and air vents at the back look kind of similar, and that power fist looks absolutely enormous. You could certainly do a fun bit of freehand, I think, with all that clean armour plate that it's got there. Might be really quite nice for a chapter logo as well. I could imagine you putting an Imperial Fist transfer on that just to hammer home the point. We've also got the scale comparison against Primaris Space Marines as well as regular Terminators too. These guys really do stand pretty tall in these, absolutely dwarfing even the bulky Primaris Marine with the sheer amount of weight and armour that they've got. I must admit it feels a lot more appropriate compared with the older ones. It didn't really make sense too much for the big heavy armour to be basically the same sort of weight class as the Primaris, at least in terms of looks and model feel. Games Workshop has been featuring them in a fair few bits of art as well. Here we've got this downloadable desktop thing that they've got on their Warhammer 40k webpage. A squad of Terminators striding into battle, blazing away with storm bolters against the foe. I must admit the release of Terminators into 10th edition really is quite interesting particularly because they've got quite a wealth of history attached to them, and then Games Workshop's new and interesting revelations about the whole Primaris situation with them. I'm sure the vast majority of people watching this are probably well aware already, but Terminator armour in Warhammer 40k is exo-powered tactical dreadnought armour, a distant relic from humanity's past without many artificers being able to construct new armour suits, so as a precious resource they're generally reserved for the chapter's first company, the elite veterans of the Space Marines. Each of these Indomitus pattern armour sets also bears the Crux Terminatus, a shoulder pad with a bit of the Emperor's own armour within it, and that creates a powerful force shield, allowing them a little bit of extra durability against the greatest shots. In battle, they'll generally teleport into the fight, blaze away with their Storm Bolters before getting stuck in with the Power Fist in combat, and there are multiple variants of Terminator armour, this one being the Indomitus pattern as opposed to the older marks like the Cataphracta or the Tartarus. Some sort of upscaled Primaris Terminator has been on quite a lot of people's wish lists for a while now. It certainly was a question on people's minds ever since the Primaris Space Marines came out all the way back in 8th. I must admit I was genuinely unsure as to whether or not Games Workshop would ever release a new upscaled Terminator model. With the turn of 8th edition, with the Primaris Space Marines, with the Intercessors and the Aggressors, to me it really did feel like they were trying to pitch Gravis armour as basically a new and updated version of Terminator armour. With the Gravis you do basically have another exo-armoured space marine armed with power fists and anti-infantry guns. At least in terms of battlefield role they really are quite similar, even if to be honest the story behind them never really felt quite the same. Terminators are pretty iconic and relic armour, whereas the new Gravis feels a bit more mass produced and high tech. I do kind of wonder if at some point Games Workshop was trying to go down the entire Gravis route, but then they realised just how much demand there was to keep the standard Terminators alive and kicking, and decided to give us those alongside them anyway. In any case, I'm certainly glad that they're not being superseded. They are a lot more storied, with all of the lore that has the chapter's veterans fighting in them in the past, particularly for certain armies as well, as I feel like you'd really struggle to have Dark Angel's Deathwing without them having their iconic Terminator armour. Perhaps the other really interesting thing is that Games Workshop have confirmed that these are both Primaris and Firstborn. So far the Space Marine line has sort of been divided in two since 8th edition, basically no more Firstborn releases whatsoever at all. Everything new that they've come out with has generally been in Mark X armour or its equivalents, all new Primaris Marines that very much felt like they were gradually replacing the old guard. It does make these Terminators a really interesting release, as Games Workshop confirmed that they won't be separated one way or the other. Terminators will be Terminators, whether or not the Marine inside is either a Primaris Space Marine or a regular one. I do think it's really quite big news for them. We've previously had this Black Templar Castellan. He basically had the outward appearance of a Firstborn Marine, but appeared a lot more in scale keeping with the Primaris Space Marines. Games Workshop said that you could equally use him as either a Primaris Lieutenant or a regular one. Either one works. Now we've got Terminators that bridge the gap. It might be the start of a bit of a reunification of the Space Marine range. Certainly not impossible, we might get a few more iconic units re-released to be in a bit more scale with the Primaris, even if perhaps their look and feel doesn't really change. I guess rules-wise it's certainly helpful, it pretty much guarantees that they won't lose any access to stratagems, like not having transhuman physiology, as is the case in 9th, and it means that they should be able to ride in either Land Raiders or Repulsors, where currently Repulsors are treated as repulsive to Space Marine Terminators, and they seem to refuse to embark rules-wise. As for the release of these models, I strongly strongly suspect that they will be in the 10th edition launch box and the starter sets. Judging by Games Workshop's release cycle, 
and their usual pace of releasing things, I wouldn't be too surprised if it's sometime around June time. I don't suspect that we'll see anything before the 10th edition launch box, and I guess that that's probably going to be the first place that you can get your hands on these. The reason that I think that they'll both be in the launch box and the starter sets is because the same thing happened last time. Last time we got a reveal of Assault Intercessors and Scorpec Destroyers, and both of those featured heavily in both Indomitus and the Elite box set. Overall, that's pretty good news if you did want to get your hands on these models. Generally, if things are discounted in the big box sets and the starter sets, they'll be cheaper to get a hold of compared with other things. You might well be able to pick up these Terminators quite cheap off eBay, even if you didn't want the rest of the Space Marines. Otherwise, my guess would be that we'll see a squad of five. We've only had the two revealed at the moment, but I don't really see any reason that they'd change the standard squad size. And in terms of armaments for the unit, I feel like if they are being featured in the launch box and starter sets, it might well be an easy build version of them, kind of similar to how we had the Assault Intercessors who had slimmed down options, and then a month or so later Games Workshop followed up the release with a full multi-part plastic kit, where we might get other things like perhaps Cyclone Missile Launchers, Chain Fists, or all manner of other options. I feel like if they did go the whole hog and made a dual part Terminators slash Assault Terminators kit, that would be pretty epic. Would be really quite nice to just pick up one box and know that you can equip them how you like them, particularly for perhaps more exotic Terminators, like say Space Wolf Wolfguard or Dark Angel's Deathwing, who currently have a lot more flexible loadouts. It does seem that from the animated trailer, the sergeant probably still gets a power sword instead of the power fist, so I guess that's fairly good indication that that might be staying at least. Otherwise, rules-wise for 10th edition, everything's pretty much up in the air at the moment. Currently in 9th edition, your standard Bolter and Power Fist armed Terminators aren't particularly great right now. With Games Workshop's big simplification of war gear costs, they feel pretty much directly subpar to things like Thunderhammer and Storm Shield Terminators, which are both a lot tougher and hit hard in combat, and I feel that that definitely outweighs the few Bolter shots that you get. In 10th edition, we barely know any of the rules whatsoever. We've only had a few cryptic hints, so absolutely no idea whether they'd be good or not. I have a feeling that they might have an interesting datasheet though, where now the weapon skill of different weapons is on the weapon profile and not on the main model. You might see things like the Power Fist hitting on a 4+, plus and the Power Sword hitting on a 3. Otherwise, I'd probably guess that they'd keep a similar sort of stat line. 3 wounds at toughness 4 with their 2+, plus save seems reasonable. They'll certainly like an environment that doesn't have quite as much AP, perhaps. And so it'll be fun to see what sort of rules options and statistics they get beyond that. I guess they probably won't be battle line as a unit that you can spam normally, though Games Workshop did say that you'd have different ways to play certain armies, and I feel like they might have made a passing allusion to perhaps a first company formation in their stream. Take those rules and you can field a whole bunch of Space Marine Terminators side by side, and you might be able to have an entire Terminator armed force. I feel like that could go down pretty well to be honest, maybe in a similar sort of way to Angron and his Disciples of the Red Angel at the moment, with their own stratagems and options to support a Terminator advance. Finally, as mentioned briefly earlier, it does look like these Terminators aren't alone when they're going to be venturing against the Tyranids. From the teaser trailer, we basically have confirmation that there's going to be two other Terminator characters coming, a Space Marine Librarian with a great big Force Axe, and I believe this guy on the right is a Space Marine Captain, significantly more ornate armour, and I think that's an iron halo above his head, plus a mastercrafted power sword. I guess it's not impossible that he might be a Terminator sergeant, but I feel like if they are having Terminators as a major part of the new box, a Terminator captain would feel very appropriate indeed. I think it's really quite fun to be honest. With Games Workshop focusing quite so heavily on Primaris Marines, I didn't think that we'd see them release a proper Terminator librarian or captain again. It seems like that has been proved wrong. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed a bit of discussion around the new snazzy Indomitus Terminators. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and particularly if you've spotted anything else about them, I'll be all ears to hear more. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k chatter coming. There's going to be a whole load to talk about as we get into 10th edition. I'll try and keep the updates coming as often as I can. I've talked quite a bit about all the Adepticon previews over the past 24 hours, Feel free to check out my full 10th edition video, which I'll link down in the video description, and I have done others on the animated trailer, Lionel Johnson, and 40k's new website. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the news and updates on the channel, then I would just like to quickly mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which is how you could help support the creation of new videos if you'd like to. Keeping all the videos coming every day does take a fair amount of time and effort, 
and if you are enjoying quite a bit, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.